Dr. Colleen T. Morton explains the impact of hormonal birth control, pregnancy, and postmenopausal hormone therapy on the risk of blood clots. Find out which women should be tested for clotting disorders before using hormonal contraception and what at-risk women can use for birth control. When are blood thinners needed during pregnancy and which ones are safe? What is the best treatment for women in menopause? Dr. Morton answers these and other essential questions about choices women can make to minimize blood clotting risk. Great. Well, thank you very much for inviting me today to speak on women's issues and blood clotting. Um, as a hematologist, as you quite correctly said, my main area of interest is hemostasis and thrombosis. And probably one of my largest areas of practice is working with women and dealing with the issues that they face with regards to blood clotting through the different hormonal phases of life. Um, I'm going to break my, my talk into really the different hormonal phases of life. We'll start off with uh, oral contraception and blood clots. We'll then look at pregnancy and the interaction of blood clots. Following that, we'll look at the thrombophilias and how they can participate in causing certain pregnancy complications. And then we'll discuss hormone replacement and their interaction with blood clots. First of all, a brief overview, and I'm sure you've heard of a lot of this already today. Um, the thrombophilias are the tendency to cause to develop clots in veins and or arteries. You have the primary or inherited causes of blood clots, the most common ones being factor V Leiden and the prothrombin mutation, and then the less common inherited abnormalities, protein C, protein S, and antithrombin deficiency. And then we also have hyperhomocystinemia that is fairly common and does interact with both arterial and venous blood clots. Then we get on to the secondary or acquired causes of blood clots, and pregnancy and estrogen use are at the top of that list. Also, immobilization, trauma, postoperative or postsurgical state, advancing age, and of course the very important antiphospholipid syndrome. Now, estrogen interacts significantly with the blood clotting system. And estrogen causes an increase in what we term the procoagulants, and these are proteins that make the blood clot. In particular, clotting factor number eight goes up when you're on estrogens. Also, something called von Willebrand factor increases in association with estrogen. And von Willebrand factor participates in the initial hemostasis or stopping bleeding when you cut yourself. What happens is when you have a vessel injury, the platelets go to the site where the blood vessel is injured, and von Willebrand factor glues the platelets to the area in the blood vessel wall that is damaged, allowing the platelets to aggregate, form a clump, and thereby stop the bleeding. Fibrinogen, which is one of the end products causing forming a clot when you cut yourself, also increases on estrogen. So estrogen increases a number of the pro-clotting proteins that we have in our body and thus increases the risk of blood clots. Estrogen also decreases or suppresses some of our body's natural anti-clotting mechanisms. It decreases something called protein S, which is responsible for switching off some of the clotting system. And it also causes what we call an acquired protein C deficiency. The levels of protein C are actually normal, but because it has to work with protein S, and because it acts on the clotting factor number eight, which is elevated, you develop an acquired protein C deficiency. The other thing that estrogen does is it decreases fibrinolytic or clot breakdown activity. <laughs> and the combination of the increase in the pro-clotting proteins and the decrease in the anti-clotting mechanisms results in an increased risk of blood clots if there's an increase in estrogen in the body. 